On the POS side, defense capability has given you know birth to so much that we love, right? Yeah. Like, you know. Well, the internet. The internet, TikTok. <laughs> 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 Just TikTok is a data sucking machine to get your biometric information. <laughs> it is. It is. Yeah. But so are those other apps, you know those apps where you like take a photo of your face and it augments it and makes yeah, it look weird? Just data sucking. Yeah. And I, I think for me, uh, you look at things that, you know, the social dilemma, like where people, it sort of, it, it sort of, it, it goes to show, hey, you know, guys, I think people, like I understand if like the the comment from that movie that if you're not paying for the you are the product yeah if you, that comment there is the best comment ever because it's true it is so accurate and I think you know go back, like some people think about stuff like this and others don't like this is just my observation of the world I am deeply curious and always questioning why right like I'm passionate about the impact of digital technologies on young people's brains because yep. I think that we're wandering blindly into a world where supercomputers are manipulating our neurons as a result of spending too much time looking at screens and I think it's very very damaging I just it, it amazes me how I don't think a lot of people are really thinking about it like in my world I talk to a lot of people I, about this and I don't think people want to think about it. It's crazy. Hmm. And I, I look at, I love talking about Nat on these because she doesn't, she doesn't listen. <laughs> <laughs> but like, we can't watch a movie. Cinema's different, but we can't technically watch a series or a movie on the couch without her. The other day, she checked her phone 40 times in less than, it was, it, it probably wasn't even an hour, right? I was just sort of going. And, and then she asked me, oh, what, what, what did I just miss? And I'm like, fuck, babe, I am not going to fucking explain. I, I, can, I can go home and I can turn off. So I can put it aside and just I don't like looking at things after 9 o'clock because it might invoke some emotion where I have to – it might, might make it a bit more unsettling for me to sleep. So I see what, what the kids do and then I look at – other friends and and what they do, just give them the device. And I'm like, man, it, it's really setting them up to be, this is your new dummy and just keep out of us, leave us alone. And I think it's a bit of a selfish thing. So I, I was having this conversation with someone the other day on a school, on a, on a governing council of a school. We are talking about um, sort of the kids and technology and one of the, the astute parents made the observation that it's actually the adults who are more addicted to technology than the children because it helps them have a much easier parenting experience. Oh, here you go. Here's your dummy. Here's your, your digital pacifier. Yeah. And that digital pacifier works right up until they're quite old. Yeah. <laughs> I like the old school pacifier. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and, and which will soon be legal here. But if when you look at that, like, does it, it might, I, I'm, I'm, I think I'm a, I'm a, a deep thinker. I'm not, you know, there's certain things that I like and I look at just what's going to happen. That movie, the, the, albeit maybe a slightly biased, it was, was very direct in saying, hey, the, the brain power behind this screen, which just you don't think of it as much and, you know, your kids aren't thinking there's a human computers behind there, it's frightening. So when I was a little kid, I was playing like a donkey, Game Watch. Nintendo Game Watch, donkey, mate. yeah, like this. And I was having a chat with a parent the other day and they were like, Game I know, Boy. but it's it's just like a Game Boy. And I'm like, yeah, nah, it's mm. not a supercomputer with algorithms designed to addict your kid's attention. But hey, whatever. <laughs> if you if it makes you feel better that it's just like an old Nintendo, that's fine. Yeah. But it's not. It's like a supercomputer with walls of engineers working out how to addict your attention because you're the product. Your attention is what they sell. Where do you think it's going to go? It's a good question. I think about it a lot. Um my view is that in the end that regulations will have to be inserted, like like government will have to step in with regulation to do something about the digital addiction challenges. Because the think, government can be trusted with holding all that information. Well, I don't think the government's going to hold it, but it's like the government stepped in with regulation about other types of media, like the government regulated newspapers, the government regulated TVs. Porn. Um, well, you know, porn was a lot more complicated before there was digital devices. <laughs> yeah, I know. You used to have to get DVD. <laughs> VHS. Beta. What, magazine? Do you think it was called Mag Beta? Magazine. <laughs> you think it was called Beta for a reason? I don't know. I don't know. But it, 
<laughs> you know, it's changed very quickly. And you're right. I, I got Game Boy. I got new Game Boy backlit. So they put a backlight on the color Game Boy. It's so it's amazing. Like I was like, wow, where was this when I was a kid? Remember you had the magnifying glass on there and you couldn't see? Still have that problem now. The eyes aren't as good. But, yeah, it, it's going to be an interesting one because there's there's certain things I think you can and can't regulate. And I think people are becoming, you know, it's almost like a buyer beware or you use that. It's It feels like that's what it is now. And I can't see turning around to Facebook and going, Oh, you know, they, you know, no one's talked about Facebook's latest data breach of, you know, 400 million accounts or something like that. It, oh, that's probably not enough, but it was a lot. No one really talks about the privacy of where your information goes. Do you think it'll get to a stage where you like a, a lot of, I've seen a few tech companies now saying, hey, I'm happy to sell. So for me, McDonald's, like, it's not that I love your product or that, but I love what you do as a business because it's quite clever and adapting and changing along the way. So I'm happy to give McDonald's whatever data they want about me that's on my Google search. But then I go to someone that I don't like, um, like B BMW. Well, I don't want to hear about a BMW because uh, for me it's not that, that brand that I associate with. So... Do you think it'll get to a stage where I tick the box of, okay, I'm happy to give all my data stance socks, you know, Red Bull, Jamu, like, you know, tick, 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 and then I should get paid a bit for being the but, advocate for that? But, I mean, there's a few sort of trends in that direction and people starting to talk more about data sovereignty and like sort of you being the in charge of your own data. Uh, there's huge forces against that, right? Like, you know, there are trillions of dollars worth of shareholder value tied up in companies that exploit your data for profit. Yeah. So, you know, I, I sort of, I'm, a, I'm an optimist. I'm yeah. always an optimist. Yeah. So my view is that, yes, I, I'm optimistic people will wake up and start to, you know, vote with their feet and they'll start to change their behaviour and adopt things that are more respectful of private information. That's my optimistic view. I don't believe it. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm with you. I can, you know, it's like we we're talking. Sometimes about people have said I'm blindly optimistic <laughs> or completely over the top optimistic. But 